Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, I just want to show you how to deploy a React app with Kubernetes. For this demonstration, I'm going to be running everything locally. So I'm going to be deploying to a local cluster. And the end result is something like this. So I have a React app being that's been deployed to a local cluster and will be accessible on localhost port 80. So this is the React app where it's just a increment decrement counter. Here's the React code over here. But to start off, I'm just going to show you how I generated the React bundle. Essentially, the bundle just consists, it's this disk folder here, and it's two files, index.html and bundle.js. The index.html file here just imports our bundle.js file, and when it imports it, our React app is displayed inside this div with the ID root. And this whole React app is being served up inside a Dockerized Nginx container. So we have this disk folder with our bundle and index.html, and then we have over here an Nginx Docker container where all we do is we run npm run build, which generates our dist folder, and then we copy it over into nginx, into the location dash user share nginx html, which is where nginx serves up static content by default. But essentially, no matter how you generate the React app content, as long as you have a distribution folder with all the files required to generate the React app copied into this location on nginx, this tutorial should work fine. And so the first thing I wanna go over is a Kubernetes deployment. And I have all this inside, let me maximize this, inside a file called deployment.yaml. And essentially, a Kubernetes deployment tells Kubernetes how to create pods that house the Docker containers. So in this instance, we're going to create a deployment to spin up a pod to house the Nginx Docker container that serves up our React app. And let me just give a brief rundown of what's going on here. So first, we have the API version of Kubernetes to create the object, um, the object being a deployment object. Then we have metadata right here, which is just data that helps identify this object. And we give it a name, my React app deployment. Then we have a spec key right here, which essentially sets the desired state of our deployment. And here we have a selector with match labels, which essentially tells the deployment to match the pod according to the label. So this right here says what pods the deployment will apply to. Then we have replicas, which is the number of pods. We're gonna have three of them. Then we have template right here, which is a pod template. So it describes a pod that is launched. Then in our metadata and labels, so we have more labels here, and it's just a label for the pod that the deployment is deploying. And then we have another spec key down here, which is the desired state of the pod. And here is a list of containers that will be inside the pod. So a pod consists of several Docker containers. In our instance, we're just gonna have one, but we call the container my React app C. And the image, this is where we get the image from, I actually have a, I'm not gonna be pulling this from any kind of public repository. I'm pulling it from localhost. So I use Docker to spin up a local registry. If you wanna know how to do that, uh, look for a video that I made on spinning up a lo local registry for Docker containers. But essentially, I'm just gonna pull an image called my React app I, which we get from this, which is created from this Docker file here. So essentially, I built this Docker image and pushed it up to this repository, which is just running on port 6500 on my local host machine. And then in here we have ports, which is lists of ports to expose from the container. So this is the number of port to expose on the pod's IP address, which for us is just gonna be port 80. And Nginx, the Docker Nginx image, if you're curious, runs on port 80 by default. So that's how that'll work there. But now that we've gone through this deployment file, let's create this deployment, so my React app deployment, by doing kub ectl, apply, and then the dash f for a the file we're gonna apply, and it's just gonna be deployment.yaml. So after we run this, we have our deployment created. We can double check by say we do kubectl get deploy, and here's our deployment right here. We have our three pods that are ready to go and all updated. So if you're curious, ready right here displays how many replicas of the application are available to users. So for us, all three are ready. Up to date is the number of replicas that have been updated to achieve the desired state or the latest pod template. And then available displays the number of available replicas and age is just how long the application has been running. But now that we have our pods up and running, we want to create a Kubernetes service to expose these pods to the outside world. And we're gonna do that with a file called service. So service.yaml. And so once again, we're creating a Kubernetes object and this time it's a service and a service exposes a network application running as one or more pods in the cluster. So bench essentially makes our pods available to the outside world. We have more metadata to identify the object. We're gonna call it load balancer. Then we have our spec to describe the object and the type is load balancer. 
which will expose the service externally using a load balancer. Then we have our ports. Once again, we're using port 80. And our selector is the set of pods targeted by the service. So ours is my React app label, which needs to match our deployment, which is the pods my React app label. But after we've done that, we just need to spin up our service now. So kb ectl apply dash f dot dash service dot yaml. Run this. Our service load balancer is created. We can double check by just doing get services. And we can see it running right here where the external IP is localhost. And now we can just access this application. So let me just actually in here just do a curl to localhost 80. Here's our React app. But if we want, of course, the browser to execute the JavaScript file, we will do it in a browser. So let me refresh this. And here's our React app served up with everything working. But that's all it takes to deploy a React app with Kubernetes. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. Besides that, if you enjoy this kind of content, check out my courses and my Chrome extension called Witscepter. Links are in the description. Besides that, just have a good one.